In this chapter, we are going to cover creating data sets. That's pretty much your uh, first step into bringing data so you can later on build dashboards or create stories and models. And you need to bring the data more or most of the data into a Tableau CRM um, just to be able to transfer it or transform it into a data set that you can manipulate or prep for, uh, for again, the analytics needs. Of course, that we still have uh, direct queries and we have live connections, uh, but that uh, you know that fits within the piece of the dashboard or the you know particular requirement. But most likely, again, you are going to create data sets. Now, what is a data set? Um, it's a storage. So we do store the data as a data storage form or format, and pretty much we bring the objects that are related to each other or tables and we combine them into one data set that serves a particular analytics need or analytics app. So maybe I have a data set about opportunities. This is gonna be the exercise. And we wanna bring opportunities information from the opportunity table, but also maybe which accounts they belong to and some account information, who owns these opportunities, maybe even down the road to combine this with activities and so forth. And uh, technically, um, not necessarily something you need to know on a daily basis, but the data set uses uh, some flattened and indexed, uh, uh, inverted index, uh, key value pair storage system. A uh, fancy way to say that we are using a file storage system with a propriety algorithm to compress the data and query the data in a fast way so we can store uh, large volumes of data into this data set and yet still be able to query it uh, in a fast way from the dashboard perspective. Now, this is the holistic data landscape within uh, Tableau CRM. We are gonna cover this again in detail in the data manager uh, videos. But if you think about um, things we are bringing data from, so we could be bringing it from the local Salesforce org. Uh, we have native connection to that. So we bring it through the connect or the sync. We bring the objects as they are. Uh, we bring account, we bring opportunity, we bring owner into its own mini, let's call it mini data sets or, or these connected or connect or sync objects. This is, uh, think about it like a free staging area. So, you know, we bring things here and then we pull them or read them to, uh, or, or read them also to update or to create the data sets that we are going to use for dashboard stories and lenses and so forth. Um, there is this uh, option called Trend Report Data and Analytics. Uh, you can see it's a permission. And once you have the TCRM Plus license um, and that permission, you will see on your operation reports, any operation report, you'll see like a little button says Trend in Analytics. And what happens if you click on it, you can schedule it on a weekly, monthly, or daily basis to run that report and store the data directly in the data set. So it's, it's an option there. We, uh, we don't mention it a lot because you can do the snapshotting through an app or you can do it manually through recipes. So there are other ways, but if you are a heavy Salesforce user uh, used to your own report and that report already has information about accounts, activities and cases and maybe whatever, and you just want to take that and trend it so you have historical data, you can use that feature. Uh, just note that it is a little bit limited. As you can see, it's directly going there. There's not a lot of control and just to use the end result data set and the sample dashboard. What we mainly will deal with, like I mentioned, is the sync. We bring the objects we need uh, through the connect or sync and we schedule this, maybe it refreshes uh, every hour, every day, every 15 minutes even, if, if it finishes within 15 minutes. This connection has the benefit of incremental refresh. You can do incremental refresh, we'll cover that in sync. And we can bring from other Salesforce clouds or other clouds we connect to, right? Including Snowflake, so we can bring the data in. We can even have a live connector that's from Snowflake and we bring them into this, again, connect layer or sync layer. After that, we're gonna use either data set builder or directly recipes to combine these, for example, the op, the account and the user to produce a final opportunity data set that has all the relative information, uh, relevant information to opportunity that I can use later on. So again, we're gonna, in this chapter, we're gonna focus on data set builder and creating same thing with recipe. 
Also, we're going to talk about CSV upload. So that's a simple manual upload of the CSV file into a data set. And of course, you can leverage your own ETL tools. As long as an ETL tool has a connection here, can read data from here, and has a connector to EA, sorry, Einstein Analytics, Old Habits Die Hard, or Tableau CRM. So you can use the ETL to push that data into directly into Tableau CRM, or you can create your own API tool. So we have an API guide under the help uh, link where it tells you what is the API call to uh, pull the, uh, to push the data into the uh, into Tableau uh, CRM right here. And uh, as in the last uh, couple of releases, we've you know starting to extend our output connectors. So once you have data sets here. You probably brought it from Salesforce, you created it, maybe you combined it or enriched it with other data and now you want to push it somewhere else. You can push it Snowflake, Amazon, S3, and you can push it to a hyper file in Tableau where you can go and build the dashboard right there. And we are going to be dealing with data flows and recipes. Those are the mechanisms or the mechanisms that execute our instructions and they can be scheduled to refresh the data. So you always have a sync that's running and then you have a data flow or a recipe that's running to update these final destination data sets and uh, you will hear me talking about again basic uh, level data sets or final uh, and final uh, resulting data sets as we go along these videos so we're going to start with a simple create from csv uh, this file should be in the uh, the EA training files, uh, the one I mentioned in the first video. You can download that zip file. And it's a simply, it's an opportunity external amount. So let's say we, we are tracking external amount in the CSV file and we want to upload that uh, from another, or maybe just uploading it from another application and we got the CSV format. This is how the file looks like. So we have a name, we have original amount, and we have the external invoice amount you know, mimicking that's coming uh, from a, a separate system or uh, external system. So if I go to my environment, can remember you're going to navigate to Analytics Studio through clicking on the uh, uh, app launcher. It's going to be right here. You're going to scroll down. You're going to see Analytics Studio. Click on it. You land on Analytics Studio. And I'm going to skip creating my own app. I have a private app for now. So I'm going to click on Create. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to create a data set. And uh, in this data set, I'm going to start with the first option, the CSV option. So I'm going to hit CSV file. And that file simply is my opportunity external amount CSV file. That's my CSV file I'm using. I'm going to open this. I will hit next. And as you can see, data set name. Okay, I can maybe give it a... Uh, Maybe here a suffix, just because I've been doing this for a while now. And um, it's going to be in private app. That's fine with me. This is a data schema file. This is a, a little bit advanced, but I'll mention it just a bit here that uh, this is where you can control the type of the fields read from the CSV file. So if, you, if, you, if I hit next, Automatically, it, uh, here I uh, or, or Tableau CRM or the data engine understood that this is a text. This is a number measure. I can change it here if I wanted to. Uh, maybe if a zip code was here and it reads the zip code as a number, as a measure, I say, no, it's not a number. It's something I group by or a slice by, but not add. So I can change it here from a measure to dimension. But there are things, if you add, for example, multi-value fields, well, you cannot define a multi-value field there. So you can go back and download this file, manually type that, upload it. We have separate uh, blogs, and, and I'm not sure if we mentioned this again in the data, uh, the data manager videos. But again, this is something you want to, if you wanted to manually control this, you will download this file, add that uh, flag, uh, is multi-value true, for example, re-upload it again, hit next, and hit upload file, and you're done. So again, that last piece of information is more of advanced. Most of the time, you're just going to upload the CSV file, hit next, check the dimensions, check the measures, check the dates, if they are correct, they look correct, you can change them from the UI. And once you upload all of this, you're going to have the data set now in your uh, Tableau CRM instance. Now, just go back a little bit 
to this particular diagram. Notice now that this data set is sitting right here. It's a green, it's sitting here, it's not in the data flows, not in the sync, because it was a manual uh, one thing, one time done, and I have the data ready for me. So that's number one, CSV. Now let's go to maybe another way to create data sets. Um, also, by the way, I'm leaving you with two tips on one. If you need to automate CSV file uploads, there's a thread, an old thread uh, on the Trailblazer community where there are you know, a few options to do that. And we do have a tool called Dataset Utils. You can find it under GitHub. Uh, you can watch this video and uh, see how you can you know, install it. Uh, it sits lo on your local laptop or a local, uh, um, you know, or a virtualized machine. And uh, what what it does, you can one of the things you can do with it is you can create a listener. So a listener listens to a certain folder. Once the CSV file gets dropped in that folder, it automatically picks it up and it can go and upload or upsert or replace the existing data set automatically um, you know based based on, on that that mechanism data set utils is not officially part of the product it's a tool out there um, but we still kind of take a look at it and um, you know so far it's been working um, you know across all the releases and anytime it, it, you know something broke we would go back and fix it but again I just want to say it's not officially a part of the product so um, the second way to bring data in is bringing most likely Salesforce data. And uh, for that, you have two ways to do that. You can use data set builder, which is the original tool that allows you to create that data set. It leverages data flow. So you use data set builder as the tool to create it, create the instructions, and then a data flow saves those, those instructions and you run or schedule the data flow to execute and, and build and update the data set. That's the data flow. However, as we started moving to recipes, um, you can do something very similar with the recipe. It's a drag and drop we're going to see today. But the difference is uh, in recipes, you need to understand which objects you are pulling and what's the relation. So data set builder automatically figures out What's the next object? You know, once you start with opportunity, it allows it to go up to account and use it. In recipes, you're gonna have to know what is the common, what is the join, what is the lookup, and on which and which field. We're gonna see this today, so I'm giving you a heads up. And it is also a heads up why we still use the data set builder, although we're kind of pushing you know to use recipes, data set builder is still a, a friendly way to do things, at least those baseline data sets that I'll be talking about. And of course, you need connect and sync because now we're not talking about CSV. We're talking about is the, is the connect layer uh, ready because we read from it. We read the data from that layer. Okay. So how do you construct a what I call a baseline data set? One of those Salesforce, when you look at a Salesforce environment and your business, you typically um, uh, look at the data under a business word or term or hierarchy. So for example, if I'm in the sales cloud, I look at the sales cloud objects. I think about opportunities and what relates to them. I think about cases, what relates to them. I think about accounts, maybe activities. Um, so I'm thinking holistically, what is this data set is going to answer, right? So if I'm talking about opportunities, well, how much and who owns these opportunities? What industries maybe we're selling in? Where in the U.S. location? Are we tracking our numbers? What's what's my opportunities closed amount, won, lost, etc. As I write these down, if I'm not familiar with Sales Cloud or at least uh, getting fam familiarized with it, I kind of go down and now understand that which objects I need to pull in. So for me, when I look at creating a data set about opportunities, I say, okay, this data set is about opportunities. That is my lowest grain. That is my core object. And then what relates to that opportunity? And notice now I'm using this term grain. Uh, there is a dedicated video um, down on the list for, under the data manager or the data expert uh, videos that talks about grains, lookups and joins and the difference. But the main thing to remember in the data set builder, it's a lookup thing. So 
you start with your main object opportunities and then you go and get relevant information the account this opportunity belongs to um, the user because these two are all up they're higher up in the hierarchy if i started with an account i can go up to an opportunity you know opportunity is down less than account so when i start with an account in a data set builder i'm stuck with the account maybe who owns that account so that's that's a big uh, distinction about data set builder and this is what we're going to do we're going to go create we're going to start with opportunity bring some of the fields that we need bring account bring user and call it okay this is my data set so let's go and build this data set um, again, you are going to hit create and you can go to create data set. And as you can see, now we're coming to the next method, Salesforce data. I'm not bringing it from an external connector. I'm not uh, creating it on top of a data set yet. This leads you to recipes. It's a Salesforce data right here. So what, what is this data set? This is about opportunities, owners, maybe accounts. And um, I can add it to an existing data flow or a new data flow. So every, so again, data flow is the backbone, right? This is what brings the data from point A to point B. Every org has a default Salesforce data flow. So we can do this, we can click here, or you can create your own if you want. Gradually, you will be creating your own if you're testing or developing, but in production, you probably have one or two or five, but they, they are scheduled. Um, and you know when they run and what data sets they populate. So using data set builder automatically pushes the instructions to a data flow. So now I'm using data flow at least to create that particular data set. And I can hit next. It opens a new tab. This is the data manager tab behind the scene. This is a data flow. This is the default data flow. And this is, we're gonna see it in a bit, but this is pretty much the data set builder a button so now it's reading all the objects that it has access to in the salesforce environment including my three objects that i want for this particular data set which are opportunity account and uh, user so like i mentioned you always want to start with the lowest lowest object in this case it's opportunities this is it opportunity i'm going to click on it it's very important i started with opportunity because if i started with case uh, sorry with account for example you're going to see in a bit and i hover my mouse here on the blue node click on the plus see this relationships i can see the objects that opportunity goes up to the lookup so i see account i can click on account join it's more of a lookup I can see the owner of this opportunity from the user table. I can click on join and now I have these two nodes. Now, what I meant by this is the grain of this data set. Every row, every record that's going to be created is a unique opportunity. So there's no multi count of opportunities and it is opportunity level going and bringing that account to which that opportunity belongs to or who owns that opportunity. Now, if I were, imagine for, for a moment, if I were to start not with opportunity and not with user, I imagine I start with account. If I click on account plus here, go to relationship, I don't see up. I cannot go up to up. I cannot go down. I, you know, I can go only up, but again, up, up is not there. So that's why if you start with account, that would have been the wrong um, uh, the wrong intention of this data set. You, you might still need a data set that starts only with accounts. You can have all the account rows, but this is not the intention of this particular data set. So this is why data set builder helps because, okay, I want something about opportunity. This dashboard, this data set about op ops, I start with opportunity and automatically I see the relationships as they exist in the Salesforce database. What are things I can pull to that same record? So that's important. Um, and it figured out, by the way, the connections automatic. I didn't know, like, I didn't have to know that account ID here is equal to ID here, so we can, we can connect. It just figured those out for me. 
So next thing is we're going to be adding the fields. Um, the fields, you can go back to that slide um, or take a look at it, but it's going to be amount, close date, closed, created date. There are about eight plus the two IDs. So next one would be name. Next one would be stage. Next one would be one. And one more type. All right, so I have my fields from opportunity. I can go to account, hit plus, go to fields. I have account name. I have account type. And I have industry. I have um, billing zip code or state, billing state. And then I have users, and from users, I'm going to get full name. So full name is the first one, and then the second one, I'm going to get the photo. There's a photo right here, and these are my fields. So overall, I have 10, 4, 2, 16 fields, and uh, just FYI, once you're done, once you hit next, there's no way to come back here. So this is not, so if you forgot a field or you wanted to edit something, you can go back to this particular uh, pop-up screen. There's another way. So for now, just I'm gonna make sure, so always make sure you have your field, then you can hit next. And then what's happening is it's taking it to this particular data flow, taking all these instructions behind the scene, these are instructions, um, and it's gonna create it in shared app. I'm gonna say, you know what, I want my private app for now, and I can hit create data set. Now, once I hit create data set, it's going to execute this data flow. And this data flow in these particular environments is not empty. Um, that's because it has some training data. So I'm going to go to data monitor in a bit. But just to follow up and explain, these things here are pre-packaged or pre-existing in this particular environment. So when I run this default data flow, it's actually going to execute everything that exists here. That's why I said maybe later on, as you start to get familiar with the product, you're gonna go and uh, create maybe your own uh, private um, um, data flow or your own new data flow to execute things. Now, uh, last thing is when we created this op owner account, and uh, let's let's assume this is it. What it does, it adds this to the data flow right here. And um, if I had forgotten any field, or I wanted to come back and modify those fields, I'm gonna have to go to the digest nodes. And again, we cover this in the data flow uh, specific videos, but just to show it to you briefly, I can click on maybe account, and let's say I forgot the field, so I select select fields, and now I can bring that field again. Hit save, it's gonna ask you, do you need to, let's say, propagate, let's say description, Hit save. Do you want to add, propagate this field? You're adding it here. Do you want to propagate it all the way down to the register? Yes, I want to add it all the way down to the finished one. And then I will have to update this data flow and then run it again, because now I added the field, it will execute it again. There are some more things specific to the field. Uh, uh, let's call it descriptions or, or characters or properties. Uh, again, we covered this back in the advanced uh, data videos or the um, data flow editor videos. But for now, I used the simple data set builder. I created my particular data set. Um, I briefly gave you just an idea how to search for that last name. The name we, we created is also register. Go back to the SFDC Digest in case you, you forgot some fields. But let's go back to the monitor right here, Data Manager Monitor. And uh, I can see my da default data flow running. Okay. Now, for these particular environments, if this is the first time you log in or you run this thing, um, you might get an error here because what happened is, remember in the default data flow, I said there are other instructions, there are some other data sets that were supposed to be created. That means your connect already is asking for these objects, but they haven't been populated yet. So what I'm trying to say is, if you get an error here and you're completely stuck, you want to go back to connect 
and you want to go to the drop down right here and manually run everything first time. Now you could have done it before too, but I don't want to over you know complicate things. What is this doing is it's bringing that data from Salesforce into that sync layer, the one you saw with the purple color, so that then when data set builder and data flow, it reads these data from these objects, not directly from here. So what we're doing now is manually populating all of these because they've been asked for by this default data flow in this particular training environment asking for many things. So just to repeat, if you get an error running the default data flow, you need to go back to connect and click on the drop down and run it once. Now, most likely what's going to happen is you're going to get this uh, message that this is running but then you will see all of these objects like myself. It automatically went and kicked off the sync, the connect, brought the data in and then executed the default data flow. That's what should happen. Typically when you have the data flow specially scheduled, it will automatically allow connect to know like this guy is asking for X, Y, Z objects. Let's when, when default data flow tries to run, it's gonna go back to the sync layer and this is default data flow or any data flow is gonna say, hey, is the data here? Are the fields here? If not, then sync is gonna go back and kick it off and bring the data. Sometimes you need to do it manually just in these environments in case something is out of sync. With that, we have created our first data set. And uh, again, this is successful. So I can go back to the previous tab and I can see that, you know, either refresh or I can look for it. Uh, op owner I just created it in my private owner uh, account. So I have a few of these. Uh, I'm just going to guess that this is the last one. Um, and this is my data set. Okay, we're not going to discover it right now or explore it, but at least this is one way to create data sets. This is through the de default data, uh, data flow, the, through the data set builder, through a, uh, a data flow. So let's go back and cover some of these. Again, this is the fields we, uh, these are the fields we used. Um, again, private or shared app doesn't matter at this time. Some of the tips for data set builder. Uh, use data set builder if you're just starting with the EA or the TCRM, Tableau CRM in this case. And uh, it will help you browse the object and the data. As you saw, like I could select the objects. And usually what is this data set about? typically determines which object to start with. So that's very important. The data flow and recipes is the process that executes these instructions. Specifically for data set builder, those instructions go to the default data flow, goes to data flow. And that's the data flow that runs instructions, brings the data in, and then you can schedule it or, uh, you know, to refresh the data. So as you can see, as we talk about sync or connect, data flow and then later recipes, you have to understand which one is running before the other, which one is refreshing the base data set. So I'm always getting the latest data set in that perspective. So now we're gonna try and build the same data set by using recipes. And uh, I'm gonna leave it to the end users or to the TCRM plus users to, to uh, uh, you know navigate or, or choose which one they are more comfortable with uh, depending on their skill sets or their data. Uh, expertise. So using recipes, it's going to be very similar, but what's going to happen is I am going to uh, select the objects individually and then try to figure out the connections. Now this is actually the screenshot is, a, is one step ahead. This is where we are going to join the CSV with the uh, existing data set, but let's go back and create that particular data set that way. You can go again, say, hey, I want to create it from here, a data set. But you'll notice now, if I go to from my data sets or from my sync objects, it will automatically open a recipe, a new tab. Notice. It took me back to the data flow or data manager. I see data flows and recipes. I click on recipes right here, right here. And what I can do now is create a new recipe. Now I can create this recipe. 
and again it opened and so on I can say select data or from here and what I have here is all the data available to me so I have all the data the data sets that have been created by me by external uh, maybe sources or ETL etc or the connected objects those are the things in the sink so and you will notice as you scroll down you will be able to tell these are the sync these are coming from Salesforce these are being created etc and the same exercise I want opportunity doesn't matter which one you start with first account and user they are here Th these are the three objects and uh, one one significant not uh, one difference we starting to see the differences here I don't have to select each field one by one I can select all or I can deselect all or specifically one so that's easier especially if you have a lot of fields in these objects and once I hit next so again this is where let's say I in that case I selected 10 and 4 and 2 but here I'm gonna just say select everything for now it is recommended if you have 500 200 you know 150 fields you don't need all of them so don't bring all of them because the data set will be too wide to scroll through and I'm gonna hit next and as you can see now, I have the recipe interface. I have these objects, but they're not connected. That's the difference between the set builder and uh, creating uh, these data sets, uh, these baseline data sets directly in the recipe. But on the, uh, uh, on the other hand, this is an easy uh, drag and drop. So remember that whatever I need, whatever I need to drag and uh, to join, um, similarly to the data set builder if my root is opportunities this is the lower level then everything else I need to drag and drop it. so for example if I need to bring account to opportunities I have to grab this plus grab it to opportunities now it changes to connect node I'm gonna say it's a join and let go all right, now I have opportunities and accounts. If I scroll down to user, well, I need to add to owner of the opportunities, not to account. So it is back to the opportunity. Similarly to that result. Yep, I, okay, let's keep editing here. So one thing you notice the join. First, I have more control here on the type. Let me expand this. I can control if it's a lookup exactly like the data set builder or if it's your typical joints and I leave that again for that advanced chapter we talk about the difference between lookups and joints but it did pick up the account ID here equal to account ID here so that's good I didn't have to you know figure out what exactly the key joining so that, at least that's a good one it's adding the description so any field that's going to come from account is going to be prefixed by account dot name account dot account id account dot industry i can change it here if i wanted to i can see all the preview items or, or columns i can see these are coming from account i can select which ones to keep and which one to do drop so by simply unchecking that means it's not going to go all the way down or uh or uh, no sorry this is in the preview um, but I do can I, I can hide it so you can hide that column if you don't want it and um, the next thing uh, yeah so again just to show you, you can select something and hide it so you hide it here from the end result this checkbox is just in the preview this preview window all right so I'm gonna collapse this again from here and uh, now I'm ready to bring user so I'm just gonna yep keep editing you need to hit the save right here apply all right now I'm able to bring the user and again similarly I'm gonna add it to this process again it's a join I kept it if you look at it down I'm keeping these as lookup again we cover this later this time it picked up the wrong ID opportunity ID is not equal to user ID I want owner ID in my opportunity there's got to be an owner ID right here so that's a, a little bit tricky right so I do understand the opportunity data set or, or that object um, it has owner ID and that's how I want the owner ID information the user information so I hit add okay now it makes sense owner on user you can scroll to the right I see the owner names and lots of more information 
the photo link, etc. And again, I can hide some of these columns if I don't want to. You know, maybe I don't want everything from the user dot. Again, notice user dot, user alias. This is the prefix. Looks fine to me. I'm going to collapse this. But then the, the last thing is I need to put a register or output node. All of this doesn't exist for me to use for dashboards and stories and predictions unless I add here a plus. Again, I need to hit apply in the bottom. So if I hit plus right here, we will cover this in the recipe data uh, recipe uh, data prep videos, the transform filter aggregate. But right now I'm just focused on output node. I'm going to add an output node. And this will create my final data set. I'll call it again op owner account, but I'll say from recipe, for example, just to show the difference. I'll say April 8 or 9. And uh, that's it. So the label can have spaces. I usually just don't use it so I can copy paste it into the API. API name cannot have spaces, but of course use proper labels. It's a private app. There's no security we're talking about right now. So now I can say apply and that's it. I have a recipe to create this data set. I can click save and run. I will give it the same name. You know, this is the recipe. Uh, let's just call it recipe, save it. And it automatically is gonna run it. And this is gonna execute. So the difference here, if I go back to Let's say I go back to data manager. Um, the difference here is we are running this in the recipe. So same thing, the objects need to be in sync. So sync has already ran and brought op, brought account, brought user the objects I saw from this original database. But this time I'm not running data set builder which runs on a data flow and updates this particular data set. I am using a recipe and it does very similar thing. It's just the tools are a little bit different. One, you know, has uh, positives uh, of figuring out the relationships and the fields you want and the hierarchy. The other, uh, you have to enter it, but you have way much more flexibility in the recipe as you probably saw. The UI is different. It's easier to deal with. It's not that data flow has tons of things, etc. And if, if you have the queue here, you can always go and refresh and this will run it. And again, I have now those two data sets. So those are the two basic ways. Data set builder uses data flow. You can do that. You can do also this thing with the recipes and you're not restricted to lookups, but uh, you just, just be aware as I change the user ID to account ID, that was tricky. So something you need to uh, be aware of. And uh, again, so this sums up what we did. We brought opportunity account user, join, join uh, in a lookup sense. I mean, it's called join, but the type is a lookup and we produce an output node. So um, again, this is just a couple of screenshots summing up what we did, um, how we selected. This is the drag and drop effort. Remember, we kept up and we added account into it. We're gonna do this next in a bit. And this is how we created uh, the recipe, how you join or you hide, you can select, just highlight it. You can hide it from the end result. Maybe you wanna drop it and you don't want to um, uh, you know, include it in the end result. Again, do not forget, there is another video called lookup, grain lookup and joins. And um, that's, that's the one you want to kind of be checking and, and uh, you know, keeping an eye on to understand exactly what's the difference. So lastly, for this piece of the exercise, we're going to go back uh, to the tab Analytics Studio. I have my two data sets. I'm going to create a final data set. And I'm going to start with my data sets. This is one way to do it or directly go to data uh, to recipes. And what I'm going to do is remember that CSV file. So I'm clicking here on data flows and recipes. Again, recipes. This is a new recipe. Uh, I could have reused the other recipe, another node. Uh, for example, when we had this particular recipe, um, let me see if I can bring it out easily. 
So when we created the recipe for, um, okay, maybe I didn't name it correctly, but I could have reused one of the notes before I, I started, you know, start a new recipe. Um, these are things you will figure it out as, you know, as you start using the product and think about, um, you know, ways to optimize the number of recipes you're maintaining. Um, and for some reason, I don't see it, or maybe I'm skipping it here. It's too obvious for me. But what we're going to do here is create a new recipe. And this recipe, what we're going to do is uh, select our data. And in this case, we are going to go and find the, those two data sets that we just created, right? So one of them uh, was April um, or from a recipe. So one is opportunity owner account. Let's start by op owner account. I'm searching for it. So I think the one we created today, right here. Today we could, so again not 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 a good practice to don't call them uh, you know different names but these are labels behind the scene you can figure out the difference but again I saw this is called today so let me use this one and the other one I am trying to use is the uh, external let's see if it's gonna bring it and let's use this one for example so now I uh, I should have these two selected. So I have two data sets. If I move forward, I should have those two. Um, maybe I need just, let, let me just make sure just to select it again. So I have these two data sets. One is uh, from a, uh, uh, from a Salesforce source right here. And one is from the external. And again, very similarly, I want to keep the Salesforce one having that lower grain or that particular unique record so I'm gonna bring the external and drop it into the opportunity owner account, hit the join. And again, I can say a lookup or I can say it's a left or join, whatever. And the last thing, again, of course, hit apply. And again, I have to hit plus and say output. So what I'm doing right here is creating an op with external amount data set. So this is pretty much what I'm doing uh, just to show you that once you start using the product you should be able easily to go and uh, you know combine the data using a recipe a quick recipe you can do much more than that but if I hit here apply now I have combined my data from my Salesforce data my external data combined them I could have added transformation etc once I save and run this, then I can use it for you know different purposes or build the dashboards or the stores. With that, uh, this should cover the basics for creating data sets. Do not forget the extra, again, the advanced uh, videos on how do you transform the data, data prep, and the or more digging deeper into the um, uh, data flow editor and the recipes themselves.